So Sony finally had their big state of play that everybody was anticipating, but they didn't really talk about any of their temple franchises. They actually talked about a lot of the third party games that are coming to their platform or uh, what they referred to as indie titles that they will be supporting. Let's go over everything that was shown and talk about my reaction to each and just some that you might be interested in checking out. Hey there, everybody. Just a real quick reminder, if you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing. I've been a little tired lately, but let's talk about this PlayStation showcase state of play. It's called the state of play for PlayStation. Anyway, uh, the big game was Deathloop, but let's go over what they showed one by one. So first of all, they showed off the PSVR title uh, Moss. This is a game about a little bit, a little tiny mouse and I remember back in the day, uh, a friend of mine, CJ, actually did the filming for like a, a IGN first piece of content about it. And I believe Marty O'Donnell worked on this one. So it's kind of cool to see that Moss Book 2 is coming out and we'll get we'll continue working on that game because it's actually really, really charming. Now, it is a VR title. So personally, I don't play a lot of VR games. I get nauseous. So I just, I don't play them, especially with the, the PS4 headset. I would be really interested to hear more about what PlayStation is doing with the updated VR system, but no news from this particular event. Uh, Arcade, Arcade Ageddon. It, it looks sort of interesting. <laughs> Aesthetically, I don't know why, but it reminded me of Splatoon. And, um, what, when I was doing a little bit more research about this one, it came off or it came up that it was worked on by the Predator Hunting Grounds people. So that's that's really interesting. And I'm actually more excited for it knowing that now. Yeah, not again, not a huge reaction from me. So for the first two, they were sort of so so for me. The third one definitely got my ears picked up, and that was uh, FIST Forged in Shadow Tech or fist in case you're curious another playstation 5 game yes a lot of these are also coming to windows but uh all of these are coming to playstation 5 and i was really surprised by just how good all the characters look they're all animal characters so they have a lot of fur in their character models and i was really impressed with how each of the models had a lot of detail in their expressions but then when you actually go into the gameplay, it was really, really cool to see how the combat system looks to be working, building upon each other. Like, I don't know. It's just a really good system is what I'm trying to say. And it has me more interested in this one than I expected to be. I, I went in with very low expectations, but forged in shadow tech, it looks great. You know, I love smaller games or, or games from a smaller studio. And this one is looking good. Uh, Hunter Arena Legends. Now, every time I see a trailer about this game or info about this game, on paper, it looks good. And all the footage that they show, they make it look like it's an interesting combat experience. But when you see the early footage of it and what it looks like in action, I am much less excited when I see actual gameplay versus sort of scripted gameplay. Now, maybe they've been working on it for a while and they've uh, managed to make massive improvements and it will be better, but I am cautiously optimistic about this one because it has everything we would like on paper, right? It's, you know, martial art based. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's a battle royale. I don't know if that's the best on paper, but it, it looks good. The graph graphics look good and everything like that, but seeing what it actually plays like is what has me more concerned than anything. So hopefully they keep working on that. Speaking of a developer who is putting uh, a game back in the kitchen for a little bit while so that it could bake longer in the oven. I don't know. I just, cook, I cook, I do homemade pizzas and stuff. So I tried to make a baking metaphor. Anyway, Sifu. Uh, Sifu is apparently a game where there's a lot of combat and every time you fail in combat, you age. I don't know if I like that mechanic. How is age going to affect your combat abilities? Like, do you get stronger or do you lose certain abilities as you get older? Um, I, based on what we saw, I mean, the combat still looks really, really good. Uh, the character seemed to be more precise in 
his movements when he fought the other characters. But uh, Sifu has been one that's been on my radar for a while. But again, it's another combat based game. Sifu is one that I am excited about and I can't wait to see more. The Jet Alien game. Uh, very, very much. I, I think that one's going to be a no for me. I don't think I will play the Jet Alien game. Nothing against anybody who was excited for that. Um, it reminds me too much of No Man's Sky. And if I want to play No Man's Sky, I will play No Man's Sky. I don't feel like they're doing anything that I saw based on the trailer that really wowed me. And the character art style wasn't one that really spoke to me. And those are the only reasons. It's just personal preference about why Jet didn't really jump out at me or wow me or or get me interested. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a plus on this. The, the third person ship like flying through it reminded me of Journey. I did like that aspect of it. So I guess we'll see. But the creme de la creme, well, there's actually two. So we also got a trailer for the Death Stranding director's cut. Now, the best part about this is you get actually story content and you get all the updates, which includes some new combat moves or something. It seems like a really, really good excuse to play Death Stranding for the director's cut, especially seeing the upgrade will only cost $10 and you actually get content with this. Now, I said in one of my other videos that I would talk about the Ghost of Tsushima update, which is uh, more expensive. I believe it's $30. Uh, this one's 10. I feel like 10 is a really good price point because that's about like what a season pass would cost or if you were doing DLC for a game, but you're also getting all these enhancements to the base game and all this interesting stuff that they're going to be doing. So Death Stranding for $10, that is the sweet spot. I feel like Ghost of Tsushima, well, it's a phenomenal game and much beloved, and they already did the next gen enhancements on the PlayStation 5. $30 seems expensive, and I would like to see a clearer breakdown of all of the things that you get for that that price point. I know they have a similar thing where you're going to get additional content, but I don't understand why Death Stranding is ten dollars, but Ghost of Tsushima is thirty dollars. I'd be I'd be interested in that. And one of the things that that these upgrades and them costing money kind of percolated in my brain, so to speak, was it's it's interesting that they're doing this and charging for it it's it's sort of like a marketing play in my mind i feel like they're like oh look at all these enhancements that we made but we also added dlc what you're really paying for is the dlc and then when they say hey look we made all these next gen enhancements well that was already done at least for ghost of tsushima so they're able to package that in with the idea that you're getting new content i don't know it's it's sort of interesting to me i don't really know how i feel about it because I feel like what they're saying is like, hey, remember all this stuff we did for free? Well, you get that too. It's still free, but also you get this DLC. And one's 30, one's 10. I feel like 10 is a good price point if you're going to do it that way and market it that way. Um, I feel 30 is a little too high. Like even 1999 would be pretty good still. Um, yeah, maybe let me know in the comments below how you're feeling about it. I mean, like Death Strand is kind of a no brainer. It's like 10 bucks to upgrade, sure. That's that's no problem. Thirty dollars. And then, well, no, Ghost of Tsushima. I think you actually have to buy the whole new game. See, that's just it. It's confusing, right? I there's no like clear price point. There is no clear like way to upgrade. It's it's all sort of convoluted. I, I think that sort of falls back to the the structuring of the PlayStation 5 system where it's really hard to transfer your saves from PS4 to PS5. It's hard to transfer your games. And they've somehow made that into a marketing strategy to sell us director's cuts of games, <laughs> which is weird to me, right? Um, I need to chew on this one a little bit more. I'm, t I'm just talking this out in my head now, but there's something about it that feels weird to me. And yeah, it's just just sort of odd. But anyway, I, I don't mean to be super negative about it because both of those games, uh, well, like Death Stranding, the director's cut stuff looks awesome. And Ghost of Tsushima, like I'm probably going to buy that. <laughs> uh, Ghost of Tsushima, I still haven't played through the whole game. So I'm like, well, now I'll just play the director's cut. It'll be the best version of the game that I can play at that time. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to move on because I feel like I'm going off on too much of a tangent. Uh, the final, there were there was also... 
some cross-platform stuff. Kamitsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles looks really, really cool. I know nothing about it. Lost Judgment is looking amazing. That is cross-platform. So Demon Slayer is cross-platform. Lost Judgment is cross-platform. And Tribes of Midgard is getting new content, and that is cross-platform. Uh, all three of those, especially Lost Judgment and Demon Slayer, were really, really intriguing to me. I need to learn more about Tribes of Midgard. Before I make a determination, I'm going to be making another video about why I'm yawning right now. It's because I'm exhausted. I've been busting my butt <laughs> uh, for the last few days building furniture. Anyway, the creme de la creme, the final, the big finale was Deathloop. Our first look at extended Deathloop gameplay. And Deathloop looks great. And I just feel like when you look at you know Deathloop videos and you see low view counts, it's really odd because to me that says like there's something off about it that's not resonating with people but for me I'm actually like whoa Deathloop looks way cooler than I thought so I have to wonder if word of mouth is going to start getting around I know I saw Dishonored and Deathloop trending on Twitter shortly after the state of play so I think people are making the correlation between the mechanics of Dishonored and the mechanics that we're going to be seeing in Deathloop Deathloop looks great. So basically you want to take out, I believe it was eight bad guys and you want to do it in, in one setting. If you die, you restart the whole thing. I really hope there's save points like after every kill. Otherwise you're going to have to kill eight people back to back without failing. That sounds <laughs> rough. And other players can invade you and then take you out. I actually really like the concept of it. The gameplay looks awesome. It looks like all the gameplay of Dishonored, but in this Deathloop world, a reminder, this is a timed exclusive for PlayStation 5, so it will come to other platforms later on. But man, it is looking really, really solid. And I hope it gets a little bit more buzz because just based on viewership alone from what I see on YouTube, it seems surprisingly low for a game that's looking pretty good. Um, so hopefully I'm just wrong on that. And everybody, everybody in the comments is like, Deathloop looks rad. I don't know. All right, uh, so I'm going to be doing a video for Saturday, just sort of talking about the channel and what's been going on. Like, it's going to be more of a personal video. It's sort of slow right now, news-wise, anyway. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching this one. Those, that was my reaction to the state of play. It wasn't like a megaton state of play. It was actually quite light. But I think they showed some interesting stuff, and I like that they didn't show just AAA. I do feel like this is an answer to the criticism of uh, saying that they don't support indies. I would have to look at each of these com companies and be like, okay, how many of these are indies and how many have some serious backing? Like, is Kojima Productions an indie? I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, Death Stranding, Death Stranding, it's time, Destin. I need to play Death Stranding. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. That was my reaction to the conference. Uh, if you like these sort of videos, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell to know when it goes live. Memberships are a thing YouTube offers. I have them turned on. Thank you so much to everybody who has become a member. I'm going to get some rest. Well, actually, I'm going to record the channel update one, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.